Good morning, everyone. Nice to see so many people. Welcome to our family service. Let's see. Tell a little piece about the concho bell and its significance. But I can't find it, so go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Please rise for the meditation, followed by the chanting in Pali and English of the Vandana and Tisarana. Uh, they can be found in the Brown Book, page 165.
Please turn to page 117 of the Red Jodo Shinshu Service Book for the Sutra versus Reaffirming the Vows. Oh, 
Recitation of the Shinshu Pledge Number Two. Please rise. That's right. <laughs> and trusting in the vow of the Buddha and reciting the sacred name, I shall proceed to the journey of life with strength and joy, revering the life of the Buddha and reflecting upon my imperfect self. I shall strive to live. Discerning the right path, I shall spread the true dharma, rejoicing in the compassion of the Buddha, respecting and aiding others. I shall do my best to work towards the welfare of society. Please continue to stand for the Gatha at our altar on page 16 in the Brown Book. Today, our speaker is our own Kyodan president, Mrs. Prudence Kusano. Thank you, Prudence.
Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see everybody. Um, I had some handouts, but I didn't make enough, so some of you would have to share. So in keeping with the food theme in the past few Dharma talks, <laughs> you received a slice of pizza, which is part of my talk this morning, uh, about my journey on the Nembutsu path. You know, although as a child I was raised a Buddhist, in a Buddhist household, I really never understood Buddhism. My family attended the Daifukuji Temple in Kona. It was walking distance from our home, whereas to attend Kona Honganji would require a car which we did not have. I began attending Kailua Honganji in 1978 when we moved to Kailua. Since then, I have joined you on the Nembutsu path. I want to share with you some of the things that I have learned. I wanted to know what is the difference from my childhood Buddhist temple to this one. I did not understand the many different Buddhist schools. And I'm still studying to understand Jodo Shinshu Buddhism. I found a resource titled Guidelines in Talking with Non-Buddhists by Ken Tanaka, who is a professor at the Institute of Buddhist Studies in Berkeley. And it's a real handy book, you know, because many times some of you might get approached by non-Buddhists and they ask you, what is Buddhism? And sometimes I hope they don't ask me because I really don't know how to answer. <laughs> so the first question he had was, what is Jodo Buddhism? And his answer was, it is a religion of awareness. And what does one become aware of? He says that one, life is, bump, is a bumpy road. We all know that. Two, life is impermanent. Three, life is interdependent. And four, life can be joyful. These are the basic truths of life understood by all schools of Buddhism. But Shinshu teachings also stresses the need to become aware of one's own nature, which is A, incomplete, B, foolish, and C, powerless when striving to realize Buddhahoods by one's own power. The next question he had was, isn't Shinshu teaching a little pessimistic then? No, he says, in, it is realistic and it provides assurance of enlightenment. You must remember the goal of all Buddhists is to become a Buddha, one who has become completely aware. And from that, from the perspective of this extremely high standard, our human nature is surely far from perfect. Without acknowledging this fact to some degree, a person will not fully appreciate the Dharma. And so the next question he says is, what happens when you become more aware? He says, we live each moment fully with deep appreciation for all beings and things that sustain and nurture our lives. We come to realize that life is a privilege, it's not a right. When such awareness deepens, we naturally work for the betterment of all beings not just humans as an expression of our concern and appreciation. When this awareness leads to a fundamental transformation within, it is called Shinjin, and we've heard that word before. His statement, we live each moment fully with deep appreciation for all beings and things that sustain and nurture our lives. To me, this means that my Life is interconnected with all other lives. I live because they live. And this is what I have learned about being a Shin Buddhist. You know, there are many examples today of how interconnected we are. You know, there was a time during, prior to the industrial age when people lived in the countryside and many of us had to grow our own food and we didn't rely too much on anything or other people, but today we are so used to having the convenience of obtaining whatever we need to sustain us with little effort on our part. The pandemic has made us realize the interconnection when the supply chain of goods coming from other countries is interrupted. Although it had nothing to do with us in the U.S., things like car production was affected because the parts they relied on came from some of these affected countries. Now, Take the war in Ukraine right now. You know, I didn't realize they provide food to so many countries, and now that they can't send it out, 
those countries are suffering even if they're not at war. You know, food prices are going up everywhere and it impacts our food businesses and many of our food businesses are closing because they can't get the ingredients. You know, on a local scale, if you took the time to see where the clothes you're wearing today was made and you removed each one of them, how many of us would be fully dressed? You know, when you go to the market, many canned goods are made outside of the US. If they removed all of those, what's left for us? Even the toys we buy for our children and grandchildren are not all made in the US. So I wonder sometimes, what do we teach our children? You know, I like to look for ways to teach young children about interconnection. And then I came across a children's book that gave me an idea. Let me show you. It's called No Ordinary Pizza. So now you know why you got a pizza, okay? Of course, I couldn't give you a real one. So you gotta make believe. So today, you're gonna be the children. I'll tell you about the book. The book is about a group of young children who were making their own pizza with the help of their teacher. After the pizza was done, each received a piece, just like you. Of course, as I said, it's, yours is not real, but you gotta pretend, okay? So the teacher said before they could eat, they had to, uh, want, she wanted the te uh, children to eat it slowly with their eyes, their ears, their nose, fingers, and their mouth. And she said they will notice something new. So the children ate one, and one said, it smells like my grandma's kitchen when I visit her. Another said, it feels crunchy and squishy all at the same time, and all in the same bite. Another said, it's a cheesy part party in my mouth. So the teacher commented, I'm hearing kids noticing so many things about this pizza. The children said, I know, we ate so slowly and tasted every single bite. We weren't doing anything else. We just sat here, chewed and smelled and ate. We used all our senses until the whole pizza became our whole entire universe. So I know you didn't eat your pizza, but I hope you had noticed it in your mind what you were thinking about when you ate the pizza. So the teacher continued to say, there's something else that makes this pizza extraordinary. Start with the tomato sauce. Where did the tomatoes come from? So where do you think the tomatoes came from? <laughs> uh, maybe in the can, but not. So one of the kids said, the store. So the teacher said, how did it get to the store? So another said, a driver got them from the farmer. So she proceeds to say, where did the farmer get the tomatoes? They said, from the garden. And you can see the pattern that she said, what did the garden, garden need to grow the tomatoes? So of course they you know, answered by seed, sunlight, rain, dirt, and sticks to hold them up. So the children began to realize the many people and things that had to go in to just make the tomato sauce. Then they began to think about the other ingredients and how it came to in, into the pizza. The teacher said, think of all the people, animals, and plants that helped get this pizza into our bellies. One child said, you know, most of the time we just order pizza and the delivery person brings it to our door. I never imagined there were so many others involved. When I eat this pizza, it's as if I'm eating with the whole planet. The teacher asked him to say thank you to all those who made possible for them to eat it. So it's kind of cute the way the book goes. They have one says, thank you, squished tomatoes. One says, thank you, people who invented pizza. One says, thank you, planet Earth. And I like this one. It says, thank you, rivers, trees, lakes, fields, rain, mud, stars, sunshine. And don't forget the bees. <laughs> so the teacher showed the children show the children how to take time to focus and appreciate the food that they ate. 
And she then helped them realize all that went in to be able to produce the pizza they ate. Now, if we all took the time to do this, you know, how can we not take climate change so seriously? You know, it really takes the whole planet to be healthy for us humans to live. So, thank you for being the children in my class and make, make believe pizza. And uh, <laughs> I had so many other stuff I wanted to share with, but then I thought, oh, the talk gets so long. And then we have other things to do after service. So, uh, this concludes my little story. And if some of you would like to see the book, it's a really cute book for children. And this is the guidelines in talking to non-Buddhists. And this was published in 1992, 94, and 95. And I think it's a good um, quick reference that you can have, because I just talked about basically what is Shin uh, Buddhism. But he has other questions that you might be asked. What does the statue of the shrine represent? Is Amida some kind of god? So Amida has nothing to do with the creation of the universe. I thought that was interesting. He says, that's right. The knowledge is important of our, in our lives, our knowing how the world, the universe began. Even if, it is, even if we could be known for uh, sure, does not help us to at attain the main Shinshu goal of true awareness or enlightenment. To be overly concerned about creation reminds us of the famous poison arrow parable. And some of you might have heard that, which, in which a dying man shot with a poison arrow would not allow the physician to pull out the arrow until he got the answer to what type of arrow it was in the background of the man who shot him. And the other question is, so your understanding is not one of course worshiping an idol? And what happens after you die? How does your pure land fit in with all this? And do Shinshu followers believe in reincarnation? Uh, so it, I know that there might be an updated one, but I find this to be very interesting. I've had it for a while, so if you're interested, you can see that. So thank you so much. And I hope you enjoy your pizza and the food after this. So appreciate all that went in, not only who prepared it, but everything else. Thank you. Thank you, Prudence, for that. I'm getting hungry now. <laughs> Please rise for the Gatha Buddhist Children on page 26 of the Brown Book. And then uh, continue to stand for the Nembutsu, which is on page 107 of the Brown Book.
meet the Buddha surrounds all men and all forms of life with infinite wisdom and compassion. Particularly does he send forth loving thoughts to those in suffering and sorrow, to those in doubt and ignorance, to those who are striving to attain truth, and to those whose feet are standing close to the great change men call death. Amid the Buddha sends forth oceans of wisdom, mercy, and love. Namo Amida. Namanda, 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 Namanda. Please be seated. All right. Do we have any announcements today? Yes. Pardon? I'm looking to see if we have new faces. I see some new faces, but I've seen them before. So welcome back. Uh, thank you to, uh, to Linda for serving as our MC, Bob for serving as our greeter. And you know, we've asked our greeters now to uh, be sure to be sort of our lookout <laughs> once the service starts, because there's been a lot of um, education offered by the, on the federal level as well as locally about preparing for any potential active shooter. And so in preparation for that, the board is looking into what we can do. But I feel that we have one thing is that if the greeter is at the front, we close the doors as soon as the con show is rung and the person enters and alert us if anything. But I think we're pretty safe in the area we are because it's sort of inside and I'm not sure, but you never know. Uh, thank you, Cookie, for serving as our uh, mi lay minister for today, and Lisa for playing the piano, and Merle and her team for our refreshments. Now, next week is Remembrance Sunday and bingo, right? Because we missed bingo, they said. And I still have a sign-up sheet up there for those of you that are interested in joining a group to visit the Higashi Honganji in Kaneohe, that's the first Sunday in August. And I'll bring it back again next week. And I just wanted to alert them if there's a big group of us attending. Um, August 23rd, Saturday from 11 to 12, uh, Joy and I'm not sure if Lisa will be here, but they're going to start teaching us new gathas. You know, there's the purple supplemental book with all kinds of gathas in there that's come from the headquarters that we have. We don't really sing. It's hard to sing if you don't really, you know, know how to, you know, if there's not a group of people singing. So anybody that's interested to learn new gathas, come here on Saturday the 23rd, and they'll teach you a few. We're hoping to add one gatha on a regular basis. So. Uh, let's see. Also posted on the board is the Buddhist Study Center is celebrating their 50th anniversary and they're having two presentations, one on August 13 and one on August 6th and 20th. The information is posted. Uh, you can come and view it in person or online. And I think, Cynthia, any announcements? <laughs> Good morning. Um, we have the country market set up out there, just one table. So please drop by and please help us out. But anyway, we have some good items out there. So enjoy. And like Prudence said, next week is our bingo Sunday. So be sure to be here. Okay? Thank you. Any other announcements? Otherwise, let's uh, do words of thanksgiving before we move. It's in your red book, page 126, for those of you that don't have it memorized like me. We are truly grateful for this wonderful food, a gift of life. May we share its benefits with all beings. As we partake of this food, let us remember Amida Buddha's compassion, which surrounds all people and all forms of life. Namo Amida Butsu. Itadakimasu.
Thank you.